I published this circuit quite a long time ago, say 10 years ago or so. And it was an oscillator, sine wave oscillator, that was uh, specially made for the lower shortwave frequencies. And uh, that's also part of the medium wave frequencies anyway. At first the schematic, I want to keep it very very short. This is the schematic. Uh, and I'm always interested if my circuits that I published say 10 years ago or so uh, now in 2023, December 2023 still work. And of course there's nothing wrong with physics. So uh, this whole unit of course works again. There are a few things to tell. Uh, I've now used here say um, slug tuning, moving a ferrite rod here inside and uh, in the coil up and down. That's important. Of course the combination of the windings and the, the parallel capacitor sets the frequency here we set the bias, that's also very very important, I cannot stress that enough. Both for uh, audio circuits, uh, oscillator circuits, this is the capacitor, uh, sorry, the, the, the potentiometer that does it all. Here with this potentiometer biasing that transistor you can set the whole circuit into oscillation and like I've told earlier on the World Wide Web there are many many circuits where there is no potentiometer here. And that means that the person that had developed that circuit was quite lucky that the circuit oscillated. Because uh, he or she had a transistor with certain properties, etc., etc. But this is the most important thing here. This is the bias. It sets the oscillation. And here we also set in a certain way the bias. And I will uh, demonstrate that. Uh, it was made for the, this frequency band. I've made now, say, for this demo purpose, this coil. Very, very sloppy, of course, when you want to make a stable radio oscillator, sine wave oscillator, whatever. Uh, it cannot be done in this way. That's far too sloppy. Every temperature change, uh, movement of the coil will have an effect on the frequency. So this is only a demo circuit and, well, uh, make the whole a coil, uh, say on a ceramic form, glue the windings well to the, um, to the form, plastic form or paper form, uh, and then you will have a much more stable frequency. So let's see what this circuit can bring. Switch on the scope. And when it's okay, we have a proper sine wave. I will switch out the lights now and tell what I'm going to do. At first, change the bias potentiometer of 25 kilo ohms. Could also be 22 kilo ohms. <coughs> Let's see what happens. Turn that potentiometer now. The waveform gets more pure here, but on a certain moment the oscillation stops. So that's what I wanted to tell. Turn that 25k potentiometer up again to give that transistor its proper bias. So this is the proper bias where we have the 
best sine wave. Now I'm going to tune that uh, 1k potentiometer in the emitter lead. Let's see what happens. Uh, when I turn it, the oscillation stops again. And here it also stops. But when I set it to this position, the current in the emitter uh, lead of the transistor gets more fierce and that has also a severe effect here on how the waveform looks like. <coughs> it looks now like more or less uh, like a square wave. Anyway, these are the most important things to tell. Uh, I now move the ferrite rod here this ferrite rod inside and outside and we will surely see that the frequency changes but regarding now I do that frequency changes take the ferrite rod out it means the inductance of the coil gets smaller so the frequency goes up now the coil is taken completely out and we are on 2.1 megahertz. Again change the bias the 25k potentiometer. Let's see what happens. Oscillation stops. Oscillation goes goes on. Here is the ideal bias. And now I turn again that 1k potentiometer in the middle lead. Let's see what happens. It surely suddenly stops. So that's more or less all that I wanted to tell. It is a sine wave oscillator again. When you want to make it in a very stable way, you need also a stable construction of the coil here. Put it in and out now. Here, that's what I'm doing. Waveform changes, frequency changes, etc. etc. So it's all to what you want and need. Thanks for watching. I think this circuit still works. Tested it again after, after approximately 10 years. And it is a very good circuit. Properly working. And very important to tell, when it doesn't want to oscillate, reverse A and B. So B now goes to B and A to A, but when it doesn't want to oscillate, connect B here to A and A here to B. That was all. Thanks for watching.